I got a computer when I was six in the internet and I had it in my room and my parents were open to that. I bought a course that wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, but kind of shifting things around. I was doing, you know, wearing all different hats and I landed on web design because I really liked it from the moment I was building my own first website to the moment I was, you know, helping um, a client launch his own and a product and doing all of this sort of stuff. You wouldn't believe how many websites are built. Like I'm talking multi-million dollar businesses on simple platforms like Shopify, pretty much drag and drop. Uh, and then, you know, WordPress as well with Elementor Pro. Actually, okay, uh, I need a service. Let me go ahead and, you know, do that whole process of hiring and finding somebody. For me, for what I do, it's amazing. It's one of the best things that ever happened. I think you just got to be open-minded to it. Um, and to me, it's come very naturally because I would always like to like over-explain things and just give every single possible detail. I think people think AI is going to replace you, but it's most likely going to be people who use AI better than you are going to replace you. When AI makes you more efficient, is it more about getting that time back so you can be spending time with family and relaxing? Or is it about making you more efficient at your job so that you can spend more time on the things that really you want to be spending time on within the business? What's I'm getting married in about like three to four weeks. So like we're, we're seeing an era come through where coding isn't necessary anymore. Um, what it can't do is the logic and reasoning and translation and thinking and humanizing and emotion side of things, which is kind of where you sit in the middle. Um, so if you go back to like the era of click funnels, you're going to see a lot of bad looking boxy websites that convert like crazy with like the red ribbons and stuff and, you know, buy now this and that. Um, and then you're going to, you know, going to have businesses like some, for example, um, holding investment holding company that, you know, just focuses on acquiring other businesses that just needs to look professional. And I call those websites uh, like a fancy business card, that website where if somebody looks you up, they want to make sure you're legit. Just recently, we had a project with a, with a company that does um, commercial um, property maintenance. The company doesn't have a website. It looks, you know, it doesn't look legit. But I always say, if you want both, just look at apple.com, one of the most beautiful websites ever. And I'm sure it's, it, it does its job in converting. It's probably just the way that you do something. And one of those most prominent examples, I would say, of a, of a booming industry in terms of business development is definitely cold email. It's been, um, and I've dabbled myself in it a lot. And it's just not knowing your audience when you reach out via cold email or being too aggressive or just not, just not having good, having good cop, you're doing your good enough research to know what it is. And a lot of people are very ego driven. And, you know, if you miss their name, you know, they, they get angry. Myself, I've, you know, I've finally come to peace with it that People are going to spell my name with a C instead of a K, and I'm totally good with that. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to sound like Alex Ramosi now, but it's probably content. And I say that because I'm guilty of it as well, of not doing it, right? Um, you can see the evidence of that wherever you, you know, turn your head. So content and, and you know, fighting for that piece of pie um, is definitely something every business should do.